Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander. Joined as always by my counterpart on the East Coast, Nate Weitzer. Nice slate of games tonight for you guys on this NBA Tuesday night. Nate's got a great article on playpicks.com for you. We failed to have a gift card winner last night, so we will push that forward to to today uh, and offer you guys a prop here in just a second. So make sure you are liked and subscribed to the page and then jump in the comments with the total uh, prop that we'll give you there. Uh, And as always, if you do need a DraftKings or FanDuel account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com. Find all those local listings in your area. And uh, let's jump into that sp- those spreads for tonight, Nate. Yeah, absolutely. We got a full slate. We got Bulls minus one at Pacers. Pelicans plus three at Hawks. Seems like every notable name in that game is questionable. The Sixers are minus one and a half at the Celtics. They do have Joel Embiid back. The Lakers plus two at Raptors, who are without Lowry, could be without Van Fleet as well. Grizzlies plus five at the Streaking Heat. The Pistons are plus 14 at the Red Hot Nuggets. Bucks minus six at Warriors. And the Blazers are plus five and a half right now at Clippers. So, Josh, a lot to choose from there. What's your favorite bet? Yeah, actually, some pretty interesting games tonight, uh, starting with one of my favorites that I'll be looking forward to late tonight on the West Coast, the Clippers and the Blazers. Um, you know, I'm looking at the over right now, Nate, to be honest, it's at 226. Um, the, you know, basically Portland overs, got to love those. Uh, their offense has been uh, really, really good lately with uh, Norman Powell inserted in there, shooting uh, great from three, 45 percent or so, averaging about 15 points per game in the five uh, games that he's played for Portland so far this year, where they are four and one overall. Um, and you've got CJ uh, rounding into form as well. He's upped his three point percentage back to about 45 percent. Uh, in that five game span, he's averaging about 20 or more uh, in, in all those games. So, um, you know, they're five and two against the spread in their last seven as road dogs. Um, you know, and between these two teams, the over goes over a lot. Um, so I do like that. And then I'm honestly looking at Portland to probably be, be able to handle uh, about a six point spread or so against the Clippers, who are probably going to be without Serge and, uh, and Beverly tonight, both game time decisions as they're continuing to nurse some injuries. Um, you know, and the Clippers have been good, but they've been streaky. Um, and, and they did manage to, uh, to win their last game against the Lakers. Um, and, and that doesn't bode well for them as they, you know, continue to, to, you know, go back and forth, even though they, they are seven and two against the spread in their last nine. Um, I do like the, you know, the Blazers to be able to put up some points tonight on them. Um, that, you know, the, the, the Clippers are decent at defending the three, but I don't know if they're good enough to, for Portland, who, who's going to be able to pull a lot tonight. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at, you know, taking that over at 226, and I'll probably put a little bit on the on the uh, the spread there with, with the Blazers. Yeah, I think I prefer the Blazers to cover if, if choosing there. It's just been too inconsistent with the Clippers, as you mentioned, um, not only in terms of covering, but in terms of how many points they're going to score. They, they often slow down the pace to a to a real crawl down the stretch and that's resulted in some head scratching unders i'm not saying that they can't get into a shootout with the blazers that's absolutely a possibility uh but i do feel confident that the blazers are not going to lose by six or more um you know it's time for them to right the ship after a a brief slide and i think they can do that with all the talent they have out there speaking of writing the ship uh the los angeles lakers have found a way to stay in the hunt without their superstars. And they've mostly done it by beating bad teams. They've won six of their last seven against losing teams and enter the Raptors who are one and nine when playing on the second leg of a back-to-back this year. As mentioned, Kyle Lowry's out. Fred Van Fleet missed last night. They barely beat a struggling Wizards team. If Van Fleet is out again tonight, I think the Lakers have a huge advantage Uh, considering they already do a great job defending the three-point line. The Raptors do not uh, score consistently down low, certainly not as consistently as the Lakers. The the Raptors are the worst rebounding team in the NBA. Lakers could also get Andre Drummond back. They don't necessarily need him with Marcus Saul and Montrezl Harrell down there. Uh, But if the Raptors are leaning on Pascal Siakam, as they have been, and, and the rookie Malachi Flynn, I don't think that they're going to find consistent offensive success Against the Lakers team that's still second in defensive rating, their last eight. Uh, interesting stat is the Lakers have won the first half and eight straight when their opponent's on a back-to-back. That indicates the rest advantage thing there. And the Lakers uh, go on to win 85% of the time when leading at the half. So I would I would be looking at a first-half spread. 
and potentially jump in. If you like the way the Lakers are coming out with their intensity, I would jump on that alive bet. Um, I mean, it's just it's just time for the supporting cast to 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 do to pull their weight basically, and they understand LeBron's not coming back for a couple of weeks. Neither is Davis, and they have to win these games if they want to stay in the loaded West uh, playoff picture. Yeah, and, and and you know, ahead of the the um, their the, you know the recent uh, games that they've played without LeBron or AD, you know, ahead of that, there was sort of a, a look ahead at let's say they you know you do, you have about ten to twelve games without these guys. Um, you got to expect that the Lakers are going to pull out four to five to six of those, even with their supporting cast. This seems like a good one to eye tonight against a Raptors team that is struggling um, despite taking advantage of, of a Warriors team the other night and putting up 130 points. That was a fluke against a Warriors team that seems to be tanking at this point. And, and I think the Raptors are a lot less than that. Um, and and the, the Lakers, as we mentioned, have a lot to play for tonight. So I'm with that one very much so. Um, another game, Nate, that I know is near and dear to your hot is the Boston Celtics taking on uh, the Philadelphia 76ers. I'm just going to kick us off and say that's where our gift card is today. Um, I'm looking at Joel Embiid tonight, so I, I, I'm going to put out there for the prop. Um, give us Joel Embiid's total points and rebounds combined tonight against the Celtics uh, as he takes on Robert Williams. Jump in the comments. Make sure that you are uh, liked and subscribed to the video and the page so that you are eligible to win that gift card uh, for Joel Embiid's total points and rebounds combined. I'm actually going to be putting some money tonight on Joel Embiid specifically, Nate. Uh, if you look at what he's done to the season in recent history since going back to last season, uh, almost 30 points a game, more than 10 rebounds, three assists. Um, you know, he's doing it on both sides of the, of the floor against, you know, a Celtics team that is, is struggling down low, despite uh, that Robert Williams has started to look good as he's been inserted into that starting lineup um, in his last five or so. He's got 12 points a game, 10 boards, five assists, two blocks, about one and a half steals. So he's all over the place. Uh, kind of flopping here and there, but I think he's going to end up fouling and beat a ton who goes to the line, you know, as much as anybody in the league in the top five or so. So, um, you know, that's where he looks to score a bunch of his points. And I think that's where he'll get a bunch tonight. So I'm going to take him uh, to get a double double and that uh, Philly victory over the seniors who are super inconsistent um, and, and grab a plus 200 on my money for just get him getting 10 boards and 10 points in a win for Philly. Um, or if you'd like it, even just around even money, you can get a, a Philly win and him to score 20 and still just get even money on that. I, I really like that. It's small spread either way, so I'm comfortable in riding Philly tonight uh, against your boys. This guy, man, he has to come back right in time to stick it to the Celtics again. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, just absolutely dominated in the two meetings in January. At 80 points, he shot 36 free throws in those games. I won't say uh, how many of those fouls were legit, a lot called on Daniel Tice, who is, for some reason, gets the ire of every referee he ever has seen. Um, Rob Williams is a much better matchup. I don't know why Brad Stevens didn't go to that more often in those previous matchups, because Williams can stand straight up. I think he will do a much better job of not fouling. He's done a great job in, in individual matchups. He has a 103 defensive rating. Uh, I think he can at least match up with Embiid, contain him a little bit. And I did want to take the Celtics here, uh, but with such a small spread, I mean, getting basically even money, yes, that, that's just tons of value to get a little performance double with Embiid because, yes, the Sixers are not going to win without him doing well. They've actually really been struggling lately. Last four games against quality opponents have been losses without Embiid. I, I thought the Celtics were going to take this one if he didn't play. Um, I still think they can uh, because Jalen Brown – had gave them the absolute work in January. And that was with the other three guys, Smart, Walker, Tatum, either out or injured or other. And um, the Celtics are just playing a lot better now. Evan Fournier has finally found his stride. I know they've been inconsistent, as you said, but two quality wins against shorthanded bad teams. Yes, but two quality wins. They're home and they have fan in the building. Oh, fans, fans, sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, multiple fans in the building which always makes a difference at the Boston Garden. Uh, they're 15 and nine at home this year. For fun's sake, I might put a few dollars on the Celtics just, just to get my old, my old fandom back. Let's do it. Um, and then the team you're, you're a fan of, right? The, the Warriors, you, you call them tanking. Uh, I mean, they would say they're playing their young guys. Uh, there is, there's no tanking in that, in that organization. Right, right, right. right. Whatever the case, <laughs> they're, They've lost 10 of their last 14 against winning squads. They're now 10 and 22 overall. They're on a rest disadvantage against the Bucks, who have had two days off. 
Bucks have been on fire, um, won seven of their last eight on the road, dispelling that notion that they can't win in, on the West Coast. They even beat the Kings with a ton of points with Giannis sitting. Giannis should be back tonight. Um, and, you know, he's dominated the Warriors as most have. The Bucks have been giving up tons of points too, though, and they're 27th in three-point defense. We're giving up 39%. So I like points to be going back and forth here. And if you're uncomfortable with that seven-point spread, I would just take Bucks money line over 232, and you get about plus 150 on your money. Uh, I think that we do see this game go over, and and um, the Bucks, of course, pull it out. They can also pull it out by double digits, which they've done quite frequently. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to to back them right now. I just I keep seeing absolutely nothing from somewhat of a lifeless Warriors team right now who um, are clearly just looking ahead to next season. Personally, I would have traded for Lonzo Ball as the rumors were out there that he was available if you wanted to take uh, give up Kelly Oubre. They didn't. We'll see what happens there. But uh, there's some turmoil in there, too. As Kelly Oubre has mentioned, he thinks he's a starter and some other Warriors players don't seem to agree fully. So I'm fully with that uh, going against a, a, a Golden State team in turmoil. So um, any DFS that you're looking for either in that game or a couple of other uh, lineups tonight, Nate? Well, I'm intrigued by the injury news, uh, starting with the Pelicans. Zion Ingram are both game time decisions. Again, Steven Adams likely out. Josh Howard is out for the season. Josh Hart is out for the season. So James Johnson, I think, is locked into a great value role there. Uh, if Adams is officially ruled out, Willie Hernan Gomez, Jackson Hayes can give you some value. Uh, for the Raptors, if Fred Van Fleet is ruled out, you got to like Malachi Flynn again, DeAndre Benbury as a minimum play. Um, some narrative in in Denver, right, with Jeremy Grant and Mason Plumley get trying to get their revenge tonight, worth a look in tournaments. And a tournament play, Zach Levine is starting to trend upward again after being hobbled by an ankle issue. Um, you know, he's done very well against the Pacers recently, who have their two stars, Brogdon and Sabonis, questionable. Uh, I think we'll see a lot of points in that one. That one's been trending up and uh, something we grabbed the over last night when it was still low, but it's rising now. Either way, a game you might want to target DFS. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm with that tonight. There's some fun games tonight. I think I'm even going to pay uh, pay up for Steph and Embiid personally. So we'll see what happens tonight. But that is all the time that we have. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. Jump in those comments tonight. Let us know about that game prop. Joel Embiid's points and rebounds to be eligible to win a gift card uh, coming up this week. Um, and we'll be back with another great show for you guys tomorrow. As for tonight, happy betting. Mm -hmm.